Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. Today we are going to talk about Solus, which is a distribution of Linux that's gaining popularity and getting a lot of attention these days. It is very different from other distributions of Linux and most of what I have to say about it is very positive. So first of all, let's take a look at their web page here. This is the Solus web page. I will have the link in the description uh, to this video so you can follow this yourself and check it out. And very straightforward on the front of the, the page here. And you can find out more just by going here. And you can also click right here to download it as well. They'll give you options for downloading an ISO image of Solus. Solus is different in that it is not based on any other kind of Linux. Most new Linux distributions that come along these days are ones that are kind of like based on Ubuntu, based on Arch, based on Red Hat in some way, shape, or form. This one is from the ground up a rethinking and a re-implementation of Linux. So they're not relying on anybody else's work and it's a very small team. The team is in Ireland and the uh, head developer is a fellow named Ike Dougherty who is one of the most interesting people in the Linux community and has a point of view that when I first started listening to Ike talk I kind of disagreed with a little bit and I thought yeah okay but as I have listened to him and as I have grown myself in the world of Linux I can totally see where he's coming from so you can he's been on a lot of different podcasts and, uh, it's very interesting to hear what Ike has to say because he's got a, a very interesting view on the world of Linux so since this was built from the ground up that means that a lot of the tools that you're used to working with aren't there so if you are somebody who uses an arch based distro and you're familiar with using pacman at the command line or if you use ubuntu or debian and or linux mint and you're used to working with app tools you're going to find that that's not there but one of the things i have found about solus is, is that it is very well documented so here is the package management page from their documentation and they just give you the basic commands and this is if you want to do this from a terminal so you use the package manager that they have uh, called EOPKG and then you issue these commands to uh, install packages that are in repositories and here's how to add repositories you know all kinds of different things in here and it's very straightforward I love the way this is done uh, I gotta give credit where credit is due because Arch does the same thing with Pac-Man. Their examples are very easy. So it's just basic commands like here's how you install a package. Very easy to do. No big deal. So if you would look at this and go, well, I wouldn't use that because I'm used to Ubuntu. I'm used to my Arch-based distro, Manjaro, Andergoss, something like that. And you'd be afraid of it. Don't be because it's really simple and straightforward. And I didn't have any problems at all sitting down and being able to work the terminal like a champ in this thing. It's all pretty logical and very well laid out. And there's more to it than I'm going to go into in the video. And we go to one more page here. The Solus Distro Watch page tells us that they're from Ireland and it is an independent uh, distribution of Linux and it is community supported. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, it's very cool what these guys have done. They have built this up uh, from the ground up. And Ike Dougherty, like I said, he is passionate about what he's doing. And yesterday, when I was trying to get this to run, because I have decided now that when I do these kind of things, I'm going to dual boot the machine so that I can get the hardware experience instead of showing you stuff in a virtual machine. Uh, I would like to do that for reviews. Now, if, if I'm going to teach you something, I'll probably still use a VM. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. But the thing is, is that uh, Ike found the video that I posted where I just kind of put a thing up and I said, hey, I'm having this problem. And he jumped right into it. I don't even think I mentioned Solus in the title of the video, but he got in there and uh, he gave me some suggestions. Unfortunately, what he told me didn't work. The problem turned out to be something that had to do with hardware. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. I was just really impressed with that, that he was that tuned in, that 15 minutes after this video got posted, he found it, and he was talking to me in the comments. So thank you, Ike, very much. That just impressed the hell out of me. 
because uh, you have this focus with the Solus Group that it's like it's a small project and they really really want to be there for their community in a big way so that is awesome so let's go back and look at the desktop here let's kind of run through this this is the budgie desktop it is based on gnome so it uses the gnome tools but the desktop is very different from gnome and my experiences with gnome 3 have always been a little bit eh, this is a little edgy this is a little shaky this is smooth and there's absolutely nothing in here that has not worked for me everything has worked which has been pretty amazing and I have installed this on two machines now because I was having that hardware problem so I've tried it on Intel and AMD hardware this machine's running an AMD uh, GPU and everything works fine so what we have is a very simple basic menu here and you have your categories over there and you can just browse through or it also keeps track of what you have opened so it lists that stuff up top so like this first part are, are you know programs that I have used recently so they present themselves you can also just find things so for instance if I want to find a Sunder which is a CD Ripper program I just put in a couple of letters now if I hit enter it'll open right up so there's the Asunder program and then if I want to pin this to the start menu or pin it to the panel rather there you go it's it's right there and that will stay where it is I can move this anywhere I want it to go okay so if I want this here no problem now if I want to get rid of it unpin from the panel that simple there are no previews that come up here the indication that you have that an application is running is that you get that little line across the top so this becomes very intuitive very quickly now we jump over here we got this panel up top you can put as many of these across here as you want you can move them around you can do whatever you want with it and then over here uh, we've got your uh, in network and Wi-Fi stuff so well that's simple screen recorder there we go there's your network just the little network manager applet and simplicity itself and then you have a, a volume control next you have a, a place where you can log out switch users or shut down the machine you have a clock and then you have this kind of cool pop-up settings menu that has some interesting things on it this is where your notifications will appear uh, you have your notifications that come up sound settings right here you can get to it very quickly there's your notifications last one was that the network was established when I started up the machine and uh, there's, then you have settings here some basic things about the desktop and the theme right there you can, you can work with the background here can turn the desktop icons on and off right here you can change the fonts from here and some settings there for the windows as well and then down here you've got the settings manager that you can open up and there's a lock and then there's a menu for logging out down there as well you get very sparse settings and this should be familiar to anybody who's using anything that's got a gnome related desktop it's pretty much all the same stuff there's no huge surprises and then we have the details about Solus and then we can set applications what happens when you put a CD or a USB stick in the machine now if that's not enough for you we also have available uh, well we're gonna get into that in just a moment let me just go ahead and open it up here so we do want to talk about software that's very important so we can use the gnome tweak tool with this so you can get down in here and manage your desktop the icons on it your theme that sort of thing and uh, I like the theming here it's arc that's what comes out 
And for gnome things like this, I can make it dark, which is great. Okay, any any kind of like gnome based stuff. But then, so the uh, Nautilus file manager looks like that. Okay, but then when I open up applications, so let's go ahead and open uh, simple screen recorder so you can see it. It renders nicely uh, where it's not going to crash. Uh, you know, sometimes with a dark theme, things don't work like buttons and things like that. So this is a cool compromise. Now, as far as the font size and everything is concerned in this video, I was goofing around with that in a big way. So when you first install this, uh, it probably will look a little bit more consistent to you. And let's see some other things to, to tell you about there's not a whole lot of familiar keyboard shortcuts so for instance alternate control T to open a terminal I had to set that manually I did install Terminator here but I will show you what GNOME terminal looks like under this theme because some people care about this stuff so not bad at all nice arc theme going on there now let's talk about software because this is really important getting software on the machine is actually super easy and they have uh, the software center application which is very straightforward and easy to use so here you can just click on a, a category so let's see what will what should we look at let's look at gaming on solus we have games and if you click on that you'll get more so they have a few games in here okay that says the system is up to date so that's where you get your updates get a list of all the installed packages I have put a lot of software on here playing around with it so it really doesn't come with a huge amount of software but I've actually added a lot to that okay then we have the third-party software they have a whole list of things here uh, that you can put on uh, some proprietary applications and kind of outdoor out, outside of the normal repo things so we have Google Chrome here you can just do that with one click got a bunch of browsers Skype is here Spotify sublime text is here so you can you can check that out for yourself so it's pretty cool now I was actually able to find about 99% of everything that I needed there was one or two packages that I couldn't find that I would like to have have access to uh, now from what I'm given to understand and I didn't do a great deal of research on this uh, building a package from source code is not supposed to be too terribly difficult on Solus as a matter of fact I installed VirtualBox and I followed the Solus documentations instructions on how to do that which were very straightforward and what they have you do is go to the Oracle website and actually download the uh, installer that they have. They have a generic installer for this where it's not in a dev package or an RPM package. And they, so they set you up on how to do that, how to download it, and then you run the, the package and it installs nicely. So, you know, even if you don't have that piece of software necessarily in the repo, if you can get a hold of the source code, you probably will have an easier time compiling it here than you would somewhere else. Now, I don't know whether that's true because I personally have not played around with that in it. I'm not really big on getting in and compiling source code. I don't mind running an installer for VMware or VirtualBox, but if, if I'm going to have to actually compile something, that always makes me a little bit nervous for a lot of reasons, from a security point of view and all kinds of other things as well. So... I don't usually mess around with that unless I absolutely have to. But that definitely would be something to look into. And then we have settings here for the updates in the software manager. And that's pretty much it. It is extremely straightforward. Searching for packages is easy to do. So we search for HTOP. It opens it up. And it's already installed here and that's how you would do this just sit down and start looking for things and you're good to go so that is a basic look at the Solus operating system that is it gang uh, 
it performs very, very well. And if I show you HTOP here, you're probably going to be freaking out when you see, uh, yeah, the processors are running pretty hard because I'm capturing HD video on this machine. This machine has a three core uh, uh, processor in it. It's an Athlon. So it's an AMD Athlon processor, eight gigs of memory in it. Uh, when I originally set this particular install up, I only gave it four gigs. So there's a couple of things to talk about that. First of all, Solus is a rolling release and you should be able to install it once and then update it and that's it. However, the way they are doing it would lead me to believe that it is less edgy than let's say an Arch release would be a rolling release of that or maybe even like a Fedora Rawhide or Tumbleweed or something like that because the Solus project, since they have to compile the packages themselves anyway, test everything that they put into the system. So uh, you're probably not going to get the updates as fast as you would get, let's say, on Arch. But if you're going after a nice balance between having the latest software and stability, then that's a good thing, or at least I think it is. So I haven't used this long enough to tell you how stable it is over time and whether an update can break something. Uh, this version came with, let's see what kernel we have here. So we've got um, 4.8.6. What do you get with a uname A? So it's, it's just a standard Linux kernel here. That's all it is. That's what they put into the system. So I don't think they're making any huge modifications to the kernel. And if they are, I don't know about it. But there you go. Uh, what else was I going to say about this? Because I had something else that I wanted to point out. Uh, yeah, I already told you it's a rolling release. So when you download it and install it, it should be the only time that you have to do that. It's a safer rolling release, or at least I think so at this point, because of the way they manage the package. Uh, they are very, very, very into the idea of curating the repositories and making sure that junk does not get in there and that there's not bad code and that if you do get something, it's going to work. So that is one of the reasons that at this point, the native Solus repositories don't have a great deal of packages in them because they're they're working through them one by one. However, I was really surprised at what was in there. Like I said, I could get 99% of what I needed to make this run. So I think I've covered all the bases about what I wanted to talk to you about that, about uh, Solus itself because there's really not much more to this. Is this going to be my daily driver distro? Probably not now. I am I just got through this big project where I configured all my machines and did a lot of updating and stuff like that. They're running Linux Mint 17.3, but they have later kernels, a lot of the applications in there I have updated myself. So everything is running nicely, just very peachy. So I don't think I'm going to be jumping off of Linux Mint anytime soon. I'm not feeling any pinch about not having packages that I need. Everything seems to work really nicely. Uh, so that's one thing that's keeping me from just jumping into this. The other thing is, is that there's like one or two packages that I couldn't find. And uh, so I'm going to keep this in sort of a kind of a dual boot arrangement for a little while and play around with it. Who knows? I might change it next week. If I find what I need, then I might do it. Uh, I'm still looking at a bunch of other distros at the same time. Now, before I wrap up this video, there's a couple of things I want to clarify. First of all, what happened yesterday with Simple Screen Recorder, what I found out what was going on was it's a problem with the GPU that's in that computer, which is integrated Intel graphics, something going on with the kernel above 4.6, and also the weird way that I had it set up. It was like a triple whammy because I was using a laptop with an external monitor, and that seemed to aggravate the situation. Plus, there's the problem with the card, FFmpeg, wasn't talking to it properly, so it made simple screen recorder not record. Uh, it seems to be a very rare problem. A lot of people looked into this, including Ike Dougherty, who jumped right on to my video when I posted it, so that was pretty amazing. And basically what came back to me is, is 
I, I just ran into one of those really unique problems. And every now and again, that happens to everyone. My solution to that problem was to just swap machines out because this is a this is an, an older machine than the one that I had been using to do videos on, but it's a more powerful machine. It's a desktop. It's got eight gigs of memory in it. It's got a really solid Athlon processor in it. And even though it's AMD, I usually tell people stay away from AMD. This works really, the uh, open source drivers really work well with the integrated graphics in this machine. So it's not any kind of super machine. And at this point, it's about five or six years old, but it runs really, really well and it works very nicely on Linux. And so I'm going to be able to reboot uh, the machine very quickly and plug in USB drives and install stuff and do all kinds of crazy stuff that would was difficult in the last setup. I said in the last video that I wanted to kind of get away from using VirtualBox to do the reviews. And it doesn't mean that I'm going to quit using VirtualBox. It's just now I'd like to do things from hardware more when I'm showing off an operating system like this. Because, uh, hey, you know, VirtualBox can be a problem in and of itself. <laughs> okay? But uh, sometimes I end up fighting VirtualBox because you get a version of Linux that doesn't work well in VirtualBox. And Solus is a good example of that. They're too busy trying to make it work on hardware to worry about spiffing it up for VirtualBox. Now, I've said in the past that I think Linux distributions ought to take some time and make sure their stuff runs in VirtualBox because that's where we all see it. But when you're dealing with a very small project and you have just a few guys working on it, the, the core developers there, it makes sense to make sure it's going to run on people's computers. And that is happening more and more. Like Ubuntu 14.04, Linux Mint 17.3, they all ran, they run great in VirtualBox. But some of the later distros, they kind of do or they don't. Manjaro does okay in a VirtualBox, but it, it depends. I mean, if they take the time to do that, great. If they don't, they don't. It's no big deal. Uh, so I think you get a better, I think I get a better idea of what the system does and I think you get a better idea of what the system does if I do it actually running on hardware when I can. Now VirtualBox, I have some virtual machines that I uh, have running uh, and so I'm not getting rid of it. I use those machines for other things. They're places to experiment with and they make good teaching tools for videos like the one I just posted so I'm not going to completely get rid of it. So it's just going to be moving a little bit more toward hardware when I look at distros and things like that, trying to get myself into a little bit of a different place. And I uh, got a comment from one guy yesterday, and he said, well, you didn't fix the problem. <laughs> Actually, I got it this morning. He said, you didn't fix the problem. You chickened out and changed the machine. And I said, I, I don't quite understand what you're talking about. I mean, the other machine works just fine for what it's now doing. What it's now doing is it has become the desktop machine for Cindy to use and what she does is email she does word processing and she does some play some games that machine can do that fine what I was trying to get it to do was boot 14 different Linux distributions <laughs> and all kinds of stuff uh, the drivers that are come with Linux Mint 17.3 with the upgraded 313-100 kernel that's in there work fine it's when I try and move down the road. And that, that's a five-year-old five, five old machine. It has integrated graphics in it. I didn't have a graphics card laying around that I could pop into it. So that was my solution. And I think that is a lot of people's solutions. Um, you know, how much time am I going to devote to sitting down and troubleshooting a problem like that, especially when it's one that's not well documented? And I had a lot of very intelligent people looking at that situation yesterday, and they couldn't find an answer that made any sense to them. So the best bet was to reassign the machine to different duties where it will work fine, and uh, it's updated, it runs, it's fine, she's happy with it. And then I moved this one out here, and did some updates on it and it works great so that's how that all ended up and I want to say thank you to everybody who did respond to that video I was really blown away by the response not only by the response but who responded to it okay like I said Ike Dougherty jumped right in <laughs> it's like okay how'd you find this that's pretty awesome so thank you very much and thank you for watching this particular video and if you get the chance I want you to go to easylinux.com the link is in the description below check that out also check out easylinux on Facebook if you do check that out then 
make sure that you give it a like. Check out freedompenguin.com for lots of interesting stories about Linux. And if you get a chance, check out Solus. This is really a very cool distribution of Linux. It's a no-nonsense, no BS sort of way of doing this. It's about functionality and usability. It's not about having a pretty desktop or the latest creature features. What it's about is just a real solid base and I'm very very impressed with it and uh, so there you go maybe somewhere down the road here this might become the operating system that I'm using on a daily basis but right now what I got is working really really well so I don't want you to think that because I didn't automatically install this and make it the world's greatest you know man say it's the world's greatest thing that it wouldn't be right for you your needs may be very different than mine uh, my needs are very multimedia based, whereas uh, you may need to do other things. So do check out Solus and see if it'll work for you. Thanks for watching, gang. We'll do it again soon.